Welcome to Political Pulse. My guest is political activist and former candidate to parliamentary elections, Lina Tanir, with whom we'll discuss the latest political developments. Lina Tanir, welcome. Thank you, Zilia. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. What are your thoughts about what happened last night at Al Ma'madani Hospital? You see, last night was uh, another kind of reaffirmation for me personally that uh, uh, humanity has died. Yesterday, what I saw was beyond belief. But then you ask yourself, is this the first time you see things like this? This has been ongoing. You know, we go back to the Beirut blast. We go back to many, many, many incidents during history where, you know, uh, there has been mass at, at execution, I would, I would call this execution, really, of innocent civilians. And I think that, by all means, this is unacceptable at every level and every front, and no matter what the reason is, uh, killing innocent civilians, and especially when they're taking shelter in a hospital. So there you have people who are seeking refuge, and, you know, they're being... Uh, treated. Uh, at, uh, treated and, and attacked in... in, in this is uh, yani, un totally, totally unacceptable. And, and I think, like uh, everyone else, we were horrified. And most of us couldn't sleep. Yes. Uh, we are thinking about these children. The most, you know, the most horrifying if, uh, thing we saw was obviously the, the, the kids. And where uh, the kids were kind of uh, consoling each other. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, unseen. The horrors, you know, going to a place where you have only bodies there, it's just unthinkable. Do you think that the war in Gaza will extend to Lebanon? Honestly, I think we are at a very critical uh, point in history of the Middle East. Uh, things can turn in any direction. But I think uh, when it comes to Lebanon, uh, uh, we cannot sustain an escalation of the war in our direction. You see, in the past, we were drawn into a war where, uh, uh, where, we, where, where Lebanon was called upon to support the uh, Palestinian cause. And yes. don't get me wrong, I think the Palestinian cause is a cause, and they have every right to have their own independent state but when we rose to support the Palestinian cause, the result was the destruction of Lebanon, uh, the division of Lebanon, uh, and the, the collapse of its economy. Yes. Without providing any support to the Palestinian cause. It's not like we paid the price, but at, from the other end, something positive happened to the Palestinian cause. Then that would have been, then we would probably say, okay, as human fraternity and humanity yes. means that we intervene, we pay the price, but they also benefit, it's fine. But this is not going to happen. So history has showed us that when Lebanon gets drawn into this, the result will only be division and further, uh, uh, further losses without any benefit to the Palestinian cause. And you see, the situation now is where uh, we're at a, at a different place. In 1975, or in the 70s, if you want to say, we, the Lebanon, Lebanon was, coming, was, was at its peak in terms of economic development uh, and so on. Now, we are on our knees. We are struggling with a political gridlock. Yes. We're struggling with an economic collapse, or financial collapse, and what have you. And we're struggling with a huge uh, crisis of uh, displaced, uh, Syrian into uh, Syrians into into Lebanon. Now, should we stand still and watch the unfolding of the situation in in, in Palestine or in Gaza, in Gaza in particular? No. What we can do, we can definitely, and we have a duty, all of us in the world, in the Arab world in particular, but in the world in general, to condemn and act politically, diplomatic, diplomatically, so exert every political diplomatic effort to come to a solution. And there is a solution. The one that was you know, ratified in, in, in Beirut in 2002 by the uh, participating Arab nations, the, the solution is that of two states. We cannot, the, the, the Palestinian cause will continue dragging everybody into an unfinished, an infinite cycle of violence if 
we don't find a solution and the solution is there and has been agreed upon. However, it has been ignored and put to, to, to rest. I think it's time to revive it because mm -hmm. you see if, if Let's let's you know let's take a, a, a higher level view of uh, where we are at now. So it's a fact that we have a, Israel is there. It's a fact. So we cannot we cannot remove that. And the developments are such that there is kind of an agreement to have the Silk Road to revive the Silk yes. Road, right? And there is also the extraction of oil and gas. And there is also, you know, uh, the, 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 the kind of totbia, the peace uh, yeah, normalization, normalization with, uh, between Israel and so many uh, Arab countries, nations. Yeah. But all of this necessitates some kind of political stability because we see, obviously now, you see with the, w with the escalation of the situation in Gaza, you have the shekel in ruins, you have the economy has come to a halt completely. Right uh, in, Isra Absolutely. in Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and you know neighboring countries, and uh, and, and and you also have the, the the oil, the extraction of oil. everything has come to a halt. So if this needs to be uh, the future, so Israel is trying to work on a future for it in this region, then it cannot without a certain political stability, and that can only come when it recognizes the right of the Palestinians to their own state. So would you say that the, um, the negotiations between uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel to come to a normalization of their relations is directly linked to what is happening in Gaza? Not necessarily directly linked, but they are uh, they're there. So we know that okay. they are kind of, they are one variable in the, the complex equation. You see, when, when we were growing up, uh, we always had when we were coming into arguments with our friends or whatever, Yanni, and then we come to a, 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 a part of the debate, any kind of debate, right? It could be political, historical, whatever it is, social, and you come to a point where it becomes too complex to solve. You say, shush, should he also chuckle outside? You yeah, know, that's true. So, so, so th that that also that has a huge significance. You know, it's it's in the in in, our, in the back of our mind. In the back of our mind, but the significance is that. Our region has been fraught with so much complexity and the problem is so complex and deep that it cannot yeah. be solved as simple as that. And therefore, when we say the, the, the normalization efforts between uh, Saudi and, uh, and, and, and Israel, yeah. but one off, but there are so many others. And we cannot, we cannot neglect the fact that Palestinians have been unjustly uh, treated. They have a cause. Absolutely. But also on the other end, there is a Lebanese cause. Yes. Lebanon has to be, you know, uh, Lebanon now is the weakest link in the region because of its uh, the, 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 the crisis, multi, uh, multi multi-dimensional crisis that uh, we are facing. And therefore, when you are the weakest link, you cannot be at the forefront and, you know, take the lead. Yes. But then there are talks that uh, Hassan Nasrallah will be talking tonight. Do you think that he will take what you just said into consideration? I mean, does he factor in the fact that uh, uh, we're facing a multifaceted crisis? Do you think that he thinks about that when he makes his strategic calculations, whether or not to enter the war? I mean, uh, we don't know what he's going to say tonight, if he's talking. But what do you think he'd say? Uh, I, I can't, you know, I think everybody will be waiting for that, which is, for me, somehow is sad because when we talk about Lebanon and we talk about uh, intervening in a, in a regional escalation or in a decision for war, I would have loved to see our government take that decision. He said and he not, doesn't have the decision. He it, said it himself. Yeah, exactly. So that, again, to ta that's to say that uh, when we, as uh, a political think tank, you know, with Sayyid al Jabal yes. and... Uh, and the whole raison d'etre of my running for a parliamentary election was that we are under occupation. We do not have the freedom to take decisions on behalf of our citizens as a government, right? So the government is kind of uh, uh, paralyzed or incapacitated to take action that benefit or that uh, serve the objective of the Lebanese. And I think at the time it was not that clear, but now I doubt that anyone has any doubt that the Lebanese government is 
paralyzed by the, uh, the, the, you know, the higher mammies. There is a kind of, you know, uh, you know uh, overshadowing of, of, of the government by, by Hezbollah, who is uh, the arm, actually, of uh, Iran uh, in Lebanon. And then, uh, well, I believe that also Hezbollah is uh, facing, there are two, two options. There is not, no, I don't think there is a, a third. Okay. The one option is obviously to, get, to, to come to the, to the support of, uh, of uh, Hamas. Hamas because of the unification of fronts. all fronts. Uh, or uh, they can uh, decide not to go into that war because if they do, then it will be, uh, uh, you know, we have seen so many warships and the uh, international community's backing of Israel. So it can be, hell will break loose when it comes to Lebanon. And I think that, uh, um, you know, uh, Hezbollah is aware of the situation in which Lebanon is in now, because they have their supporters, they have their people, they have, and they know that uh, we are facing extreme economic uh, dire states. We are in a dire state economically, I w financially, and even, you know, we, we, we don't have any readiness for any kind of escalation in Lebanon. So uh, I'm hoping that they don't take the unilateral decision of dragging us into this war because it will, from history, again we're repeating, uh, from history, it will not help the Palestinian cause. We have seen before, we were dragged before. The only by byproduct of being dragged into this yeah. is the division of Lebanon and that will not advance this, the Palestinian cause in any way whatsoever. So it's only losses that we will, uh, we stand to suffer by being, by being dragged into this. What I would love to see Hezbollah doing is actually, uh, well, you know, or taking on the lead in, in negotiating a way out of this political uh, gridlock, if you want, uh, that we find that the region is in because this could drag into a, a multi... Do you think that they have the will to do it? I'm hoping they will. I'm, I'm, this is a personal, yes. a personal wish, obviously, because again, uh, I believe that uh, it, we, we are, we in Lebanon, uh, the, the people of the South are Lebanese. Of These are civilians, and we don't want to see any more suffering and any more loss of uh, uh, civilian lives. Uh, again, especially that we know that it will need to lower uh, violation, uh, uh, violence will only lead to violence. So what we need at this point in time is all diplomatic and political efforts concentrated to be able to overcome this crisis. Then what do you make of uh, Abdullahian's visit to Beirut a few days ago? That uh, further reassures what you were saying yes. that uh, unfortunately the, peop the, the ones deciding on the fate of Lebanon and what will happen to the territory yes. here, it will, will it be used as, 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 uh, as a front to further escalate in the region is not the Lebanese government, it's not us, it's, it's Iran. Interestingly, if, you, if we look back in 2006, when we had you know, the full-fledged uh, escalation yes. and invasion of Lebanon, uh, it was at the time uh, Hezbollah that used to come up and uh, come out in the news and then the media telling us about developments, this is going to happen, this happened, these are the pictures, this is whatsoever. And now, surprisingly, you see, it's not even, it's not them, it's, it's Iran and you, and you have Hamas on the other end. So we're waiting for word from Iran, from the prime minister, from the president, from, from, from. And not, nothing from our side. So we're, we're drawn to the point of non-existence. So what worries me is that uh, the Lebanese, to them, Leb Lebanese people don't exist. What about the MPs? They're supposed to represent the people. What are they doing? I believe that, uh, I mean, the, the, the last I've seen, the, the MPs of the, uh, the, the opposition have come, up, come out with a statement condemning a all of yes, this. Yes, but it's very shy. Uh, well, again, this I think, uh, in my, um, I mean, in my humble opinion, I think this is the most they can do. What I would have wished to see is um, a more active effort yes. to unite everyone, right? So now is not the time to think about uh, the gains, the, the individual, or even the the party uh, party gains. 
from anything that might come out of this escalation or the, 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 the development in the region. I would have loved to see putting uh, self-interest and group interest on the side for, for a more Lebanese whole or global interest. I would have loved to see ac people, MPs and others, actively working on uniting everyone so that we have a voice. Lebanon now doesn't have a voice. No, it doesn't. So you see in the international community, everybody's out condemning. Lebanon is, doesn't have a voice. Not a, nobody's reading or listening to what we have to say. Perfect. Isn't it the time then to elect a president? Absolutely. It's absolutely the time to elect a president who will actively work with a, a, an active government to put a place and pl a plan because we are the closest to the to, to the to the to the to the, to the war. front yes. to the war and we are witnessing daily daily attacks, uh, attacks and exchange replies and fires, exchange yeah. and whatever so we have to have in place a plan of how to deal with any further escalation because you see from the one end we are worried that Hezbollah might draw us into war what if Israel draws us into the war you know <laughs> yeah. everything it is possible you know it goes both ways so if they do drag us into war, we need a plan so without a president who is active and who will take on the lead to go the, the way we did before when we had the 2006 to take on the lead and to go talk to every single country to every single political world leader what have you and and and, and explain the point of view of Lebanon that is now in existence we have no choice. We stand no chance. But isn't uh, PM Najib Miati uh, throwing the towel by saying that he doesn't have any uh, power? He didn't say it in so many words, but he implied it when he said that he could not, uh, that he doesn't have the, dis the, the, the power to make the decision of whether or not to enter the war. He said the truth. He doesn't have. And that's another uh, proof that we are under full occupation and that's why we need all Lebanese who, parties, individuals, politicians to unite and elect a president. They, were, they convened yesterday in parliament to elect the bureau of the chamber and other committees. They could have, I mean this is not a priority can right you, now. You can, can you imagine you have your th south the south, uh, the south villages border, what have you, drawn to war, and we are electing a parliamentary uh, uh, committee. committees. What the, we need a, a war plan. Now is the time to come up with a president, have him uh, elect a, cab a cabinet that comes up, comes up with a plan of how to deal with, with, with uh, any escalation, any, any, the day after, if you want, also. Because Lebanese need somebody to reassure them. I'm a Lebanese citizen. I need to, f to know that there is somebody out there holding my rights up high. Otherwise, we'll turn into another, uh, f you know, what will happen to Lebanese? Will they become displaced too? Hopefully not. You know, so what are we doing to prevent such an escalation? The so fact far. that, you know, what if, what if Israel, you know, uh, also invades Lebanon this time again? So we will have more Lebanese displaced this time and Syrian displaced. So what will Europe do? What will the rest of the world do? Who is holding our back? Who, we, I want a Lebanese government that is strong, that applies laws, that applies international and Arab uh, international resolutions to uphold my back. I want somebody to, vent, to defend my rights. Where are they? The current government we know as PM Miati said, doesn't have, cannot do this because they were elected out of a certain uh, balance of power that tilted towards Hezbollah. So this is a government that probably cannot face up to, to, to the agenda that Hezbollah is trying to implement in the country, right? So we want another one. So what are we doing to make sure that we have a president and another cabinet that can sustain the blow. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lina Tanir, for being my guest. Thank you, Tilia. It's a great pleasure always. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. You can replay this interview on This is Beirut's website and social media platforms. See you next time.